Thanks, everyone. Th thanks for joining our talk today. So my, my colleague Peter is, a, is an iceberg committer. I happen to be a Flink committer. We both work for Apple. And uh, we had a couple issues in terms of trying to ingest uh, data with relatively low latency via Flink to iceberg. So let's see what our uh, motivation was specifically. We had a, a fairly simple use case. We have data showing up in Kafka. We would like to make it available to downstream Trino consumers, and our standard table format is iceberg. We, we had reasonable requirements. Data should show up within a minute. The partitioning scheme should look OK. Let's just do this. This, this should just work with the defaults. We didn't have uh, too much data. But what ended up happening, or what ends up happening, if you do nothing, you just use the defaults, you will end up with uh, thousands of data size, uh, files per each hour and dozens of metadata files. And that actually ends up being relatively bad read performance for, for what you would expect. So uh, a simple Trino query for a couple hours of data ended up, being, uh, ended up running over 20 seconds for us. So let's see, b without going into the details, let me just show you the results where we managed to, uh, to get, and pe uh, Peter will tell you the details and explain why we managed to get exactly there. Uh, so as you can see, we improved the meaningful metrics by more than 90%, and it's, it's as simple as compaction. We'll, we'll go through the details, but that's ultimately that's missing here. And why it is missing here, or why it was missing here, is that uh, Iceberg doesn't offer a server as you would expect from an Eraker database and for good, good reason or any other table formats and this means that more responsibility is pushed down to you and you have to actually think about keeping your table pristine and we need to provide the tools as an iceberg community or as a Flink community to be able to do that. So the basic idea that I do have to share for, uh, from Flink with you such that it's easy to consume the rest, the rest of the uh, deck is how we actually coordinate with Iceberg. Flink is the data processing system here and it needs to coordinate with the storage system such that we can claim uh, exactly once processing guarantees. We'll uh, write out every uh, piece of data and we don't produce duplicates. So the way we do that is a two-phase committing uh, approach. As fast as data arrives, we start writing into the underlying data storage, S3, HDFS, and so on. But we only let Iceberg know that, hey, those new data files now exist, and please account them in your table. Once a checkpoint, which is Flink's uh, high availability mechanism, has successfully completed. This makes it so that we won't accidentally uh, create duplicates, and we account for all of the data. Now, the interesting part here, the reason I'm telling you this is we, via this mechanism, make it so that each Flink worker for each checkpoint writes a data file. And on each checkpoint, we produce a metadata file. So basically, we are leaking Flink abstractions, the number of workers, and the frequency of these Flink checkpoints towards your data table physical layout. And we need to do something about it, because if you just use the defaults, the, the performance on the read side actually becomes awful. And with that, I would like to pass it to Peter to tell you more about Iceberg and our proposed solution. Uh, thank you, Martin. Can you hear me? Cool, cool. So, uh, probab probably you have uh, seen this slide already on several different presentations here, how the Iceberg table works, so I try to keep it short, just the main, main parts uh, which could be interesting. So uh, once you start reading an iceberg table, first you go to the catalog and fetch the metadata file. Then you're reading the metadata file, then you can go to the um, manifest list file, the manifest files, and the data files. What you have here, here is files, 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 files every time. This is one of the main points of iceberg, that everything is stored in a file, and file systems are easy to scale, easy to, uh, easy to um, allow multiple readers to access these files. So, uh, but how can you make these easily scalable systems fail or become a problem? When you have multiple small files with the remote file systems, you only have, pro you have problems when you have small files. So, the first thing Martin already mentioned, 
you can create many of smaller files if you are creating plenty of commits. If you create a commit, if you create a change in the iceberg table, you are creating at least two or three more files uh, to the iceberg table. How can you make it even worse? You uh, create a partition table, and since iceberg specification says that if you have different uh, records for different partitions, they should reside in a different file. That will mean if you are writing uh, data to different partitions, it will create multiple new files again. And how can you make, make it even worse? Let's decide you want to remove some of the data, you want to delete files, delete, uh, delete data, delete re uh, rows. In this case, you will create the uh, delete files. Your reader, again, has to read the, all of the files you have created, and this could cause a serious issue with the uh, multiple files problem. No? This one? This one? Okay. How uh, iceberg uh, flink sync works. Uh, basically, when you are writing data to an iceberg table through flink, you are using the iceberg flink sync. Iceberg flink sync has three main parts. The rebalancing part, the writer part, and the committer part. The rebalancing makes sure uh, that the data is distributed evenly between the writers. The writer uh, writes out the data files, and finally, the data files and the collected metadata files sent to the committer, and the committer adds these uh, files to the iceberg table. Uh, how can you make the writes performant? You, you can make the writes performant by leaving out the rebalancing uh, stage and chaining the incoming stream directly to the writer. So basically, when the record comes in, the writer writes it out, and then, uh, <laughs> thanks. Writer come, uh, writes it out and send this to committer. This is ideal for the writing perspective. This is the most performant one. You don't, uh, if you are chaining the uh, records to the writer, then the rebalancer uh, doesn't have to uh, serialize and deserialize the data, doesn't have to send it through the network. It could use just Java objects. Is it uh, optimal from the reader perspective? Well, if you have a, an unpartition table, if you have uh, equally distributed uh, record number, number of records in your streams, that, then it's fine. But if you have partitioning, for example, then uh, if you have, uh, if your uh, writer receives f uh, records for different partitions, it needs to write uh, multiple files. So you have 10 writers, you have 20 partitions, you end up writing 200 files in every commit. That it will be ad adding up in the long term. So what can you do? Instead of using the non-distributing uh, uh, method, you can use the hash to distributing method, and then uh, this is when the rebalancer kicks in. The re what the rebalancer does is creates a key based on the partition of the record, and uh, for this key, it generates a hash, and based on the hash, uh, decides which writer will receive this record. In this case, the record will go to uh, a specific writer, and every, every record for a given partition for, uh, will arrive to a given writer. As an end result, you will, have, you will write a single file for every partition, which is very, very good from the reader's perspective. Is it good from the writer's perspective? Well, not really, because if you have skewed data, if you have the rec uh, time series data, for example, then most of, the, most of your records for a single uh, partition, then you will end up writing these, all of these records with a single writer, and your other writers will be doing nothing, they, were, they will be idling. idling. So here, here comes the shuffle partitioning. Steven Wu and uh, Gangia uh, created uh, this new method and it's used uh, extensively uh, in our, uh, in, in house. Is, uh, what it does is basically make sure that the data is evenly distributed between the writers and it's uh, packed together uh, in safe, for the safe partition will arrive as few writers as possible. This uh, uh, the open source contribution of this one is ongoing, and it will be soon available in Iceberg. So we, uh, we have fixed as many issues we, uh, as possible inside uh, the Flink sync, but still if you have high, uh, high, uh, high, uh, low latency requirements, or uh, you have high number of partitions, you will write plenty of files every time in every commit. What can we do in this case? The guys here uh, created the Spark convention, and uh, it, is <laughs> it is available 
for, uh, for, for us with the cost that you still need a Spark uh, uh, cluster for that. For some of our users, some of our customers, this, this is uh, not available, not possible to use. But uh, on the other hand, they have uh, existing resources already available for, uh, for the existing fling jobs. So what uh, we can do uh, better by using these resources and adding, adding uh, compactions to the fling jobs uh, immediately. So this is uh, what we have been working lately uh, 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 internally. Um, you probably remember the steps that rebalance uh, right there, committer. This is not uh, really a th uh, thing specific to, to Iceberg. This is uh, spe uh, specific for all of the Flink things which have uh, this exactly one requirement. So uh, the Flink community realized that and created the Sync2 API, which uh, creates an underlying uh, creates an API for this and uh, abstracts away most of the things which uh, is done indifferently in, uh, in other things. And now you have only have to write the writer and the commit uh, and everything else is taken care of by the thing. Also, it provides hooks for the rebalancer, for, for the post commit flow, and so on. The post commit flow is specifically created for the compaction reasons because other, uh, other system has the same issues as we have here. So, uh, Rod Mezenas is working on uh, moving the fl uh, flink, uh, iceberg sync to the new sync v v2 API. And uh, after this one will be committed, we can create two new components, trigger manager and compaction, which could, which we could add to the post commit topology. Uh, when, uh, when this will be done, it will be available uh, for every uh, iceberg sync that you can just turn on the compaction and if you are fine with running the, thing, uh, running the compact in the uh, sling, uh, same thing job, it will uh, use your existing resources and you will be able to, to uh, compact the tables. You have to be very aware that uh, this uh, compaction is usually a, a resource intensive task and it is bursty. So this is uh, often not the, uh, not the best uh, usage of your uh, fling cluster. So you might want to uh, find another solution for that. And for this, using uh, the same components and only adding one monitor operator in the beginning, uh, you can extra abstract, abstract output that uh, fling job uh, to a different job. And in this different job, the monitor source will monitor your uh, iceberg table, collect uh, the changes for the table, and then the trigger manager could decide when to start the compaction and the compaction could be started. In this way, you will, uh, you will separate out all of the, uh, the tasks for a different uh, job. It will separate out the resources. If you have multiple writers for the same iceberg table or even writers out outside of Link, these writes could be uh, considered when compacting or when deciding on the compaction. And you can choose whatever compaction task uh, you want. That, uh, I will talk about that later. Again, uh, these components could be reused for External schedulers as well. You, uh, you can create bad jobs from the compaction jobs, and you can use whatever uh, scheduler you already use, and it's able to call uh, things. Uh, uh, maintenance task. Uh, we are providing uh, four maintenance tasks for uh, internal users, and we plan to open source uh, these four maintenance tasks. Again, the infrastructure will be there uh, to allow other ma maintenance to tasks to come. These are the four uh, which we plan to start with. The rewrite data files is uh, for uh, more efficient reads. Basically, if you uh, have plenty of small files or you have plenty of delete files, rewrite data files will help you to uh, remove those uh, constraints, uh, decrease the number of files, remove the data files. What it does is just reads, uh, reads the data files, applies the delete files, and reads up, writes out the uh, data files again. Uh, when you have uh, problems with, uh, with, the, uh, with the planning, you have too many uh, small manifest files, you can use the rewrite manifest files to read those small manifest files, compact that uh, to the slower one. Expire snapshot, uh, when you start compacting, what you are doing is uh, reading the files and creating a new copy of the files with the compacted versions. Your table will start to grow. You will have multiple copies of the data into the iceberg table, and you, have, uh, you need to remove those files, 
and get rid of those files which are not treated. Otherwise, your storage cost will uh, skyrocket. So expired, uh, expired snapshot helps. If you decide that you don't need this snapshot anymore, you can remove the uh, snapshot, and with that you can remove the uh, data files and manifest files which are only used by that given snapshot. And uh, lastly, the delete all found files. Let's say for whatever reason you copied data to an to iceberg table directory, or you have a job which created uh, data files, uh, metadata files, but ended up not committing those files to the iceberg table, you might want to remove those files to save on, again the uh, storage cost. The, the, what digital orphan files does is list, list your uh, uh, table directory, compares those, uh, the found files found in the directory with the metadata files find, uh, referenced from the iceberg table. If it find, finds files which are not referenced from the metadata files, it uh, uh, removes them. Okay, how, uh, how the work goes, what are the stage uh, where we currently at? Basically, uh, when we started to work in the sync to implementation of the iceberg sync, we realized that there are some features which are missing the current sync uh, think, uh, v2 in, uh, API. We added these new features, committed, merged them to the Flink uh, uh, open source code base, and uh, with the release 1.19.0, uh, this is available for everything to you, everybody for it, uh, to use. We, this is the point when we can, uh, we will be able to start working with the Iceberg uh, community, start using the uh, Sync V2 uh, API, which is an ongoing work. Uh, hopefully, the PR will be re released soon. And uh, also, uh, we created a propo proposal for, for the Iceberg community, community to uh, have uh, Flink table maintenance av available for the Iceberg users. This proposal is accepted, and uh, the first PR for this uh, proposal is already uh, in the review. There are uh, at least several more PRs to come, which will fi uh, finalize this work. Okay, uh, these are the results as you, you, have, you have already seen. We don't, don't allow to show exact numbers, but just imagine a case when, when you have uh, commits in every, every, every two minutes, and uh, you have plenty of par partitions. In every partition, in every two minutes, there is a new file. After the compaction, if you really have a relatively small amount of data, it will be a single file again instead of having for two hours, it is 120 files, and it could be compacted to a single file. This is how you see these kind of numbers. This, is, uh, this specific case we have seen is very, very specific for uh, very, very tuned for compaction, to be honest. So you, your uh, actual use case might be different. Uh, think, plan, plan, and decide. OK. That's the uh, scary part. Uh, I have uh, prepared a, a, a little dem demo for you. I'm not sure how, how hard it is to see. But uh, here, what you, what you see here is the Flink UI. In this Flink UI, uh, you can uh, see or, uh, two, uh, or, or, or Flink job and for the operators for this uh, given Flink job. And here, what you can see is a, a writing uh, writing stream. We have uh, random data source generation. We are uh, using writers, iceberg uh, writers, to write out the data with a parallelism of eight. And we have uh, the committer, which uh, commits the table to an iceberg, uh, iceberg table. This, uh, this is to, this is to, uh, uh, this is the old uh, sync. Uh, is it, uh, this is the old Flink sync. Uh, what you can see here is the writer have an eight par uh, parallelism and the uh, committer is only one. There is only one committer. There is only one thing who changes the table. Next to that, uh, I put into the same job uh, uh, the, uh, the solution we are proposing in the second slide. So we have the monitor source uh, watching for changes in, on the iceberg table. Since the previous, uh, as I've shown, this is the uh, Sync V1 API, there is no place for the post commit topology there. So uh, here we need to have a monitor source. This checks uh, the, uh, the changes on the table, sends it to the scheduler or trigger manager to decide when to start the, the compaction. 
Here you can see the planner is already chained together uh, here. When it decides that it needs to uh, compact, it plans the compaction. And when, uh, when the plan is ready, it decides, okay, I need to rewrite these files and uh, go through all of the, uh, the groups which are created and commits them to, uh, to a smaller files. And these smaller files are committed in, in the rewrite committer. The other parts you can see here are, are just for uh, purposes to collect the data and, and uh, statistics and what happened there. Okay. Uh, some interesting things. Data source generated almost 300 records now. These 300 records are written out to 800 files. Uh, here you can see in, in, in oh no, 800, uh, 800 uh, mm, write results, which also could contain multiple files depending on the number of directories. And uh, this, this uh, mm, 800 write results we, uh, have been sent to, to the committer to write. If you take, uh, at the monitor, take a look at the monitor source, then you can see that it, it uh, it's, uh, runs every, uh, emits a record in every 10 minutes, so it checks the date, uh, table, direct, table for changes in every 10 minutes, so it emitted 10 record, records, and for these 10 records, we decided four times that we need to uh, start the compaction. And here we have seen uh, 10,000 files, which are compacted to eight, 80 files, and then these 80 files comp uh, compacted, uh, added to the iceberg table. So uh, this is uh, how it looks like if you, if you are looking uh, the things in, uh, through the Flink, Flink UI. Martin? Okay, and, and just to uh, add some additional thoughts on, on the general landscape, uh, of course we can take one step back from this compaction approach and look at other approaches in terms of improving um, the layout of these uh, data files. There is one such effort that we would like to highlight in the uh, Iceberg community that we uh, simply call Balanced Spring Writer. The idea here, without going into the details which you can read on the mailing list that we linked on the bottom of the slide, is that based on the previous statistics that we have accumulated for previous checkpoints, we can basically decide to rearrange the buckets. Obviously, the partitioning itself of the table stays the same, but the buckets themselves and Flink accidentally also call this partitioner, the, the, so the Flink partitioner becomes dynamic, but that isn't the same as the partitioning key. Based on this, we get to make improvements. Uh, also, if instead of one step back, two steps back, you could consider other table formats here. The, the notable Apache ones are Hoodie and Paimon. In terms of this, Hoodie is closer to Iceberg. Paimon actually introduces uh, a search tree approach based on the, the primary key, and uh, that uh, does uh, reduce the need for compaction, even though both of these systems do offer compactions, uh, by the way. And there are notable vendor alternatives as well, be it your Databix Delta Rake or Confluent Table Flow. So certainly this uh, topic is still moving, and it's at the moment undecided which one of the systems will be the one unifying one. But uh, if you are considering this general topic, uh, we would consider looking at these. And uh, as an overall summary, uh, when you choose uh, a table format, please look at uh, your ingestion latency and your compaction needs. Uh, these open source communities are actively working together, and we are more than welcome to uh, also have you work on these challenges. We, we are uh, very happy to uh, be as open as possible and work uh, more useful tools together. Thank you.